Are you still running Windows 10? Are you aware that Windows 10 won't be supported after October 14th, 2025? I know, it's simple. Just use the free upgrade to Windows 11 that your computer has been bothering you about for the last year now, right? Well, for some of you, it's not that simple. Let me explain. One of the big things that Microsoft has been trying to do in recent years is increase the security of their operating system. Not only has Microsoft been working at accomplishing this, but the computing industry and standards has also been moving along in this direction as well. As a result, there's a number of things incorporated into not only Windows, but in the actual hardware as well to make it more difficult for hackers, exploits, and other nefarious characters from being able to take advantage of. Excellent. Simply put, the entire reason Microsoft has created more strict standards as to what hardware Windows 11 and future operating systems will run on is to take advantage of these additional security resources and standards. That's a big fancy way of saying that if your computer is too old, Windows 11 won't install on it. Bummer. Well, I'm here to let you know that there is an easy way to get your machine upgraded, and no, it doesn't require you to download and use all sorts of other third-party tools, tricks, or even thumb drives. I do want to make one thing clear though. This goes directly against Microsoft's own recommendations. The whole reason they require you to have these hardware components and resources is to protect you from the evils that are out there trying to do you harm. I'm not recommending that you run Windows 11 on unsupported hardware, but that being said, I also understand there are some out there who, for whatever reason, either don't want to or are unable to use supported hardware and simply want to try to stay as up to date with Windows as possible. If that's you, then you've come to the right place. There's a couple of things we need to check first. The biggest one is to verify which version of Windows 10 you're running currently. Doing this is fairly easy. First, log into your Windows 10 machine. When you're at your desktop, click on your start button and type WinVer, W-I-N-V-E-R, and press enter. You're going to want to click on it and run it. This will show you the current version of Windows you're running. You want to make sure the version is 22H2. Once you've made sure you're running the correct version, you're going to want to make sure that you have all the latest Windows 10 updates installed on the machine. To do this, click on the start button and go to settings, then update and security. Make sure you install any and all pending updates, reboot the machine and check again. Keep doing this until the machine's completely up to date. One eternity later. Next, you're gonna want to open a browser and navigate to the Windows 11 download page. I'll include a link in the description below. Scroll down to the section on download Windows 11 image ISO for X64 devices. Click the drop down and select the Windows 11 Multi Edition ISO for X64 devices and then click the Download Now button. The next screen is very important. You're going to need to select the product language. Make sure you select the exact same language of what's currently installed. If you select the wrong version, you won't be able to perform the upgrade and keep all your files, folders, and programs. When you have the correct language selected, click on Confirm. Next, you're going to want to click on the 64-bit download button. Depending on your browser, it should download the ISO to your downloads or other folder. It's fairly large, so it may take more than a few minutes to completely download. One quick thing to note before I continue, more than 90% of you currently aren't subscribed to the channel. If you find this helpful, go ahead and click on that like and subscribe buttons. It helps the channel more than you know. And now back to the install. Once the file is downloaded, you can close the browser. You're not going to need it anymore for this process. Next, open your downloads folder or wherever you save the ISO file to. You want to right click on the file and select mount. If you're prompted with a security warning, go ahead and click on open to mount the image. This should add a new drive letter to your Windows Explorer for the image. You want to make a note of what drive letter the image is because you're going to need that in the next step. Next, you want to open an administrative command prompt. To do this, click on the start menu and type cmd.exe. Make sure you select run as administrator in the right hand side of the window. If you get the UAC or user access control warning, click on yes. In the command prompt window, 
type in the letter and a colon that was added to your machine when you mounted the image. In my example, the image added an E drive, so I'm going to type E colon and press enter. Now here's the important part. We're going to launch the installation with a specific command line. You want to type the following. Setup.exe space forward slash product space server space forward slash compat space ignore warning space forward slash migrate drivers space all and press enter. The first thing you may notice is that a window pops up saying installing Windows Server. Relax, you're not actually installing Windows Server, but the command makes the installer think it's installing server. Between that and the other information on that command line, it will bypass the checks that the installer normally does to make sure you're on supported hardware. Now click on next. The install will now check for any missing updates for the actual installation and download them if required. When prompted by the notices and license terms, click on accept. Next, you'll be prompted to choose what you want to keep. Since you're upgrading, you're going to want to make sure the top option of keep files and settings and apps is selected and click next. Setup will now download any updates it needs. When it's ready to install, click on the install button. Windows will now perform the upgrade and reboot a number of times, so be patient. When the machine reboots and prompts you, go ahead and log into it. It should perform some initial cleanup and finally get you to your desktop. Congratulations, you successfully upgraded your Windows 10 machine on unsupported hardware to Windows 11.